Hello YouTube, this is Learn Tutorials, and welcome to your 19th GIMP tutorial. Today, I'm going to be talking about colors. Now, um, there's this thing called the Color Channels um, thing in GIMP. When you click on it, it's going to look like the Layers um, dialog. You're going to see these three things, red, green, and blue. I mean, unless you added something here, I think you can add, yeah, you can add new channel, but please don't do that right now. All I want to show you is that if you click the visibility next to red and you turn it off, you're not going to see any red in the image. Now, if you know what RGB means, red, green, and blue, that's what it stands for. It's like a color scheme or a color, not a color code, but you know, like a color system thingy. Um, I highly suggest you read up on it at like Wikipedia or something if you don't know. Otherwise, if you do know, that's really, really great because all the pixels in this image are represented using RGB. So um, it has like a numeric value for red, a numeric value for green, and a numeric value for blue. And then it'll like translate that into an actual image so your eyes can see it instead of just seeing a bunch of numbers because that would be really stupid. Um, so yeah, so um, that's just like a short... Um, you know, synopsis of RGB in case you don't know what it means. So anyway, let's say I click on um, the green. So you don't see any green. Um, yeah, so it's going to take all the green out of the image. It's going to go through each pixel and it's going, I think it sets the um, value to it for zero, um, which means that there's none of it in the image. Um, so yeah, so that's why it does. If you do the same thing with blue, you'll get the same thing. Uh, yeah, so see if none of these are selected, um, or visible, I mean, not selected, sorry. Um, so if none of them are visible, you're just going to get black. You can do combinations and all that um, junk. So just mess around with it and see, like, oh, hey, if I take out blue and green, that leaves red. But if I leave red and green, it's going to take out all the blue, which gives me yellow, because yellow is the opposite of blue. Um, so, you know, that's what it does. If I go to the colors tab and click on color balance, you're going to get this dialog that pops up. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Anyway, it's going to look like this. Um, you're gonna, let me just talk about these color levels really quick. So there's red, green, and blue, which is RGB, which is how the image is represented. But then there's cyan, magenta, and yellow, um, which I actually think is another type of color scale, but... Um, this isn't actually using the color scale of C, M, Y, K, I think. Um, it's using RGB, but since they're the opposites, they put them there. Now, um, if I slide the slider over to red, you're going to see that it goes to 100, and that everything looks red all of a sudden. Now, if you want, you can slide this down so it looks cyan or, you know, whatever you feel like. Um, wow, that looks very glitchy for some reason. Like, that's very strange. Um, but whatever. So yeah, so if you reset it, it'll just go all go back to zero. Now, um, what I want to tell you is that, sure, um, if I do this closer to red, or, um, you know, all the way to red, basically, it's going to be adding red to the, it's not actually adding red, sorry. Um, I think it's like amplifying it, or whatever you'd call it. But if I take it to cyan, you can see that this is minus 100% red. It's not 100% cyan. You want to know why? Because cyan isn't actually, like, officially represented in RGB. Neither is magenta or yellow. Like, it isn't RGBC for red, green, blue, cyan. It's just RGB, which means that because the, um... Cyan can only be represented within these three numeric values, it takes, because it's the opposite of red, it'll make it negative red, which means positive cyan, think of it like that, like, so, um, like, so yeah, so basically it's just like a negative and a positive number, basically, um, I hope that explains it well, so if I, um, put this to green, I think it's like adding green to the image, like it's changing the numeric value and upping it a whole lot, but, if you have it negative, it's taking out the green, which is basically the same effect as adding magenta. 
That's what I'm trying to say here. Yeah, that's exactly, I think, what it does. Um, don't quote me, though. I'm not, like, uh, official on this or anything. Um, preserve luminosity. What this is going to do is because it's RGB, um, I think when you're editing it, like, if I just click this off, you're going to see it kind of looks really washed out for some reason. But let's say I have, like, really high contrast right now. So all of this should be basically, like, super yellow. Um... So as you can see, you can't really see the edge of this light switch, but when I have preserve luminosity checked, you can. <clears throat> um, basically, what this is doing is luminosity is how bright or how dark a pixel is. Now, this means that um, when it's actually, because a pixel is represented using RGB, there isn't a value for how bright or how dark it is, which means... Uh, let's say I change this or something. Wow, that looks very strange. Um, I don't even know why it looks like that. But anyway, let's say like you edit something in here. It's only the pixel is only represented using three values. Um, so this kind of like will kind of skew it up a bit because it's trying to change the color of a pixel, but it accidentally changes the brightness of the pixel. Preserve Luminosity tries to undo this, basically. It's going to change the color of these pixels, sure, but is it going to change the actual brightness? Not at all. Or, I mean, actually, I think it does, but um, it's just trying to counteract. Like, it's not perfect, basically. Um, like, it's trying to do its best, but this isn't, like, you know, really perfect or anything. Um, but yeah, it's probably close enough. Um... Anyway, preview, obviously, you know what that does. If you uncheck it, you won't see anything. Another thing I want to tell you is the range to adjust. Shadows, midtones, and highlights. I taught you about this before. If you do shadows and you up it up to red or something, it's only going to take the shadows or the darkest color pixels of the image and edit it. You can reset the range. So, um, you know, same with midtones, blah, blah, blah. And same with highlights, too. So you can see which... So if you just bump this up to red or something, you can actually see the lightest colored pixels. So you know, hey, look at all these pixels. They're densely populated right here, but there's like none of them right here. Um, in case you ever wanted to see the light colored pixels. Um, another thing I want to tell you about is let's say I do something like this. So I go to midtones, I edit it. I go to highlights and I edit it. I click reset range on one of them. It's not going to do it for the other one. You have to go to each and everything you have here. Um, in this case, it's only three of them. Um, and then you have to click Reset Range. Um, so yeah, so if you click Reset Range on one of them and your thing still looks really weird, um, that's the reason why you have to go to each range and um, reset it. So anyway, there's this thing called a preset right here. Um, let's say I make something really weirdly trippy. Like, what is this? I don't even know what this... Okay, um... Let's say I wanted to save this color balance so I could use it on other images, because obviously everybody would love to stare at this all day. Um, click this, save it to, um, trippy stuff, um, I don't know, whatever. And then press OK, and it should add, um, this as a preset. You'll be able to drop down in the menu when you're working on another image. You can click it and it'll change the color balance uh, values to whatever your preset actually was. So there. So in case you um, you know wanted to repeat an effect across like a whole um, slideshow of images, you could using color balance. All you gotta do is just save it as a preset. So you don't actually have to like write down the values on a piece of paper and type in, oh, this was 27, this was 33, and this was minus 42. You don't have to do that. It's a lot easier to just use a preset. So anyway, uh, let me see. Um, I hope I did a good job at explaining um, all of this weird stuff. Um, if I don't didn't, please don't sue me. Um, I think this is it for this tutorial. Hope you guys have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next one.